Hey guys, we know it's been a while since we've been here. We had a super fun, busy summer with family and friends, holidays, all that, had a great time. But now we are officially back and we're not taking any breaks for a long time. So we're gonna be here for the next 300 plus weeks. You can count on us. We're holding ourselves accountable. We're ready to rip. So if you're new here, I'm Austin. That's my wife, Jess. And as always, taking his afternoon nap, Otto. My wife and I, and even Otto, share love for food, travel, and culture, and that's what this show is all about. Welcome into our home. If you remember last episode, we kind of forgot we had to look back to see where we were even, uh, what was it, like a month ago. We were in Belize, and we were making, it seemed like forever ago, but those garnaches that we made mm. still just linger on the tips of the tongue. Mm. It's almost like a dream. Did it even happen? It was so good. So if you haven't checked that episode out, click the link at the end of this episode and that'll direct you right into that episode. You'll be eating garnaches before you know it. But with little time to spare, we move forward to this week. By now you probably know where we're headed. You see it up in the thumbnail, but we're headed to a place that's pretty close to where the Summer Olympics are happening right now. Actually, when we're filming this episode, it's the first day of the Olympics in Paris. If you go from Paris to a little east, it'll drop you right where we're gonna be tonight in Luxembourg. And we couldn't be more excited to be back with you guys, so let's get right into the episode. Tonight we are going to be making a dish called Knidlin Machpek. Some will call it the national dish of Luxembourg. It's a comforting dish. It's dumplings, bacon, some cheese. All into one. It's real simple. It's kind of a winter type of dish. The heart of the summer in Florida today, it was like 103 degrees outside. We sweat our body weight. And we're going to have us some nice warm hot <laughs> Knidlin Machpek. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. We get right into it. It's really simple. We got four cups of flour, one cup of milk, and four eggs. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> Neighbor Dan. We mention him in just about every episode, I think. <laughs> so, we're gonna make ourselves pretty simple dough, and that'll be our dumplings. Before you do this, get a pot started with some boiling water. Well, you're gonna need to put the water in there and then boil the water, because you can't have- no, Start with boiling water? <laughs> so, Let's see, I don't have a whisk, so I'm gonna use a fork. I don't know if that goes the eggs. It's pretty funny that we have one of whisk. <laughs> yeah. We had one. We had a plastic one. And we had a gold metal I don't even think that would have worked. One. Oh, did we? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I do remember that. All right, so this is gonna take a couple minutes to get started. And while I mix this up, I'm gonna send it over to Jess to introduce you to the country of Luxembourg. Luxembourg is a small landlocked country located in Western Europe. It is bordered by Belgium to the west and the north, Germany to the east, and France in the south. The capital city is Luxembourg City, and the nickname for Luxembourg is the Green Heart of Europe. And the population sits at 672,000 people. A Luxembourger is what you would call a person from the country of Luxembourg. And according to population census, the population is 52.8% Luxembourgers, 14.5% Portuguese, 7.6% French, 3.1% Italian. Luxembourg is quite small and you can actually drive across the entire country in about 45 minutes. It is 35 miles wide and 51 miles long. All right, we got that dough to a nice, it's what the consistency you're looking for right there. I take, technique I saw is you take two spoons. These aren't gonna be the prettiest dumplings you've ever seen in your life, but they're sure gonna taste damn good. So, you're gonna go, let's see. That's just what size, what would you call that? What does that resemble? I'd say strawberry. Size of a strawberry we're looking for here, folks. And we're just gonna drop her in there. 
Go for a nice dip in the hot springs. <laughs> Is there hot springs in Luxembourg? I'm not sure about that. <laughs> we'll have to find out. We're just gonna keep doing that over and over till we're done. Key to know when they're done is they're gonna float to the top or they're gonna be swimming. So right now they're all at the bottom. I've just come in here, but you can't really tell through the camera, but they're all kind of sitting at the bottom. And when they start floating to the top, that's when you know they're done. I guess there are a lot of different sized strawberries, but I'd say your typical to large size strawberry. Yeah. yeah. I'd say. Swimming. One of them nice. is starting to come to the top. That looks like a crazy looking dumpling. We got some floating to the top here. Let's see what they look like. Oh, look at that. It looks delicious. My grandma actually used to make something called ripple soup and it was similar to this. I think it might have been German and it was really cheap meal, really good. Jess was saying, if you got a lot of kids, make this probably for about a couple bucks. You could probably feed a bunch of people. Look at that sucker. There's some big guys in here. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my goodness. I think that's exactly what we're what ribble soup was, really. Really? Yeah, because they came out like this. And it has that smell. Look at that. Delicious. Well. Wow. All right, there's our uh, loop. So, I'm gonna let these cool down a little bit, then we're gonna go to the next step, but before we do that, I'm gonna send it back over to Jess with more facts about Luxembourg. There are three official languages in the country of Luxembourg, Luxembourgish, French, and German. The majority of Luxembourgers are multilingual. In fact, by graduating high school, students have been taught and are typically fluent in at least three different languages. The origin of Luxembourg starts in 963 AD when Count Siegfried acquired the now Luxembourg Castle. Over time, a town developed around the castle and became a territory of the Holy Roman Empire. During the reign of the Holy Roman Empire, it went through a series of many successors and generations, and the castle grew, becoming one of the strongest fortresses in the entire continent of Europe. Eventually, the royal family died out, and Luxembourg became ruled from abroad by France, Spain, and the Austrian Netherlands until the French Revolution. In 1795, Luxembourg was annexed by revolutionary France and later became a part of the Napoleonic Empire. In 1814, the fall of Napoleon ended French domination in Luxembourg. In 1815, the Congress of Vienna met and gave Luxembourg the status of Grand Duchy and made the country a personal possession of William I of the Netherlands. In 1867, the Treaty of London declared Luxembourg a neutral and independent country. In 1868, Luxembourg adopted a constitution and became a parliamentary democracy. Despite its declared neutrality during World War I and World War II, Germany occupied Luxembourg. In 1949, Luxembourg joined NATO and in 1957 became a founding member of the EU. Despite Luxembourg's small size, it is one of the world's wealthiest countries and a major center for banking and finance. Also the European corporate headquarters hub for many large businesses such as Skype, Amazon, Ikea, Pepsi, FedEx, and JP Morgan. Luxembourg has a ton of historical sites, including over 100 castles, 75 of which were actually built in the Middle Ages. Luxembourg only sees about 61 days of sunshine per year. The national animal of Luxembourg is the gold-crested bird. Luxembourg is known for their great wine and has the highest consumption of wine per capita in the, in the 
the entire continent of Europe. Luxembourg became the first country ever to make public transportation free for all. It is said that Luxembourg's culture and cuisine is a blend of French and German. Many cultural traditions and festivals have German origin. While you see the French influence in a lot of the art and literature. All right, next step is we are going to fry up some bacon. I got about four strips of bacon, cut them into little bits, and we're gonna fry these up in butter. The more fat, the better. So we're gonna fry bacon in butter. Not too many smells better than that right there. No, truly. All right, we got the bacon fried up and we're just gonna go right in with these dumplings. Be careful. We're gonna fry these up for a couple minutes, get them kind of golden brown. Add a little, I would imagine, crisp to the outside, not too much, but a little bit. All right, we're gonna go in with a little heavy cream, give it kind of more of a sauce type of vibe, I guess. All right, the final step is adding some a mental cheese, which first saw that, didn't know what that was, did some research. Similar, if not the same as Swiss cheese, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But they use, they have more of like a grated, like Parmesan. Couldn't find that anywhere. So I got slices of Swiss cheese. It looks kind of <laughs> wonky, but hopefully it works. Hopefully it doesn't ruin the dish, because right now it looks fire. Hopefully it melts really good. And if it does, we got ourselves a phenomenal dish. I've never really, I guess Swiss cheese melts pretty well. Oh yeah. Oh, oh we got a runner. Didn't see that. <laughs> oh yeah, it's cheesing up. It smells, it smells the cheese. All right, I think we're all good. I'm gonna plate this up and we're gonna give it a try. Let's go. So stoked. Let's go. Knudlin <whistles> Machbeck cooked so like funny. that. Yeah. Not even eight o'clock. That might be the earliest. <laughs> hey, we might be on fire coming off this break. Hey. We'll be rolling. We kind of got the experience. We know what to do. We just gotta put it in place. In that flow. Yeah. All right. Go in for a taste. It smells so good in here. Bacon, cheese. Dough. Dough. You just boil some dough. Your house will smell phenomenal. Don't burn your face off. Thank you. Subscribe, <laughs> comment, like, <laughs> blow us up. <laughs> to the moon we go. <laughs> or to Mars. Or Very good. Love the bacon flavor. Mm -hmm. Love the dumplings, super comforting. Love the cheese. I might put just a crack of salt on it just so the cheese flavor really comes mm -hmm. out. But uh, I'm not mad about it. I want this in every form possible. Mm. So I want this with sauce. I want this with other yeah. things. I want these dumplings in every way <laughs> that it can possibly come. I'm, I think I'm a big fan of dumplings. Yes. Okay, you go for it. I got my eye on one. It's right there. Oh yeah, that's a good bite. How hot was it? So, one of the videos I was watching, trying to piece together how to make this, said it's their version of like a pasta dish. I mean, it tastes like a, it's got that comfort feeling of pasta that that, that gives you. The bacon, I would say bacon speaks for itself, but it can't speak for itself because it's bacon. So I'm gonna speak for it, bacon. Put it on anything. 
sign me up. The cheese melted like we wanted it to. That I cannot wait to have in like February on a cold winter's night. <laughs> Bundled up with a blanket on the couch watching Sunday Night Football. Does football happen in February? That would be Super Bowl. So okay. February, Watch it for the I mean, Super Bowl. I'm watching the Super Bowl <laughs> on that one Sunday night. <laughs> <laughs> and I pro and then by then I probably had this dish 15 times already. Yes. <laughs> so, with that being said, that reminds me a lot of what my grandma used to make. Ribble soup, can't wait to uh, devour that. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there's another five over there and they're gonna be gone in about 30 minutes, so. <laughs> Luxembourg, Knidlin Machpec. Dumplings with bacon, cheese on top, phenomenal. <laughs> Add it to the Reeves cookbook once again. We're back at it, we're ripping, we're rolling. Hop on board. Come on in. Hope everybody's had a good summer. If you're on the other side of the world, hope you've had a great winter. Summer Olympics are here, brings everybody together, just like we want this show to do. So it can't be any more of a sign to get right back and get the ball rolling. So with that being said, where's that bucket hat? Did we lose it? Did Otto eat it? Um, if we left it out, Otto might have eaten it. Otto, did you eat the bucket hat? No. There it is. He would never, he would never. We're straight to the bucket hat, like always. Where does our fate lie? What if we pick France? Give everything up to the universe at that point. Yeah. Fate. Right, we have a country. Three, two, one, zero. Where are we headed next week? Week 16, we are headed to... Lesotho, Africa. Oh, back to Africa we go. Back to Africa. We've done a lot of countries in Africa. We're getting very familiar with the African culture, the Af African cuisine. Um, and there's so much within one continent. So many countries of Africa, so many different things to explore. Jalaf rice yeah. was phenomenal. All right, back to the grind we go. We're headed to... Lesotho, Africa. We'll see you back here for episode 16 of Cooking Around the Planet. Have a great week. Bye. Some canidlin, bud? Hmm? Good boy. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs>